subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. The IPCC has released its sixth assessment report this week, the first of three parts. The IPCC stands for Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, comprising of 234 scientists from 66 countries. This team worked together over five years, combing through 14,000 research papers, evaluating them, analyzing them, discussing them out in detail, and then coming up with this assessment report. The AR6 is the world's largest, most scientifically accurate and most up-to-date report on the causes and effects of human-induced climate change on the planet and its findings are not at all unexpected. They are startling and ask for urgent action but also offer hope saying that things will get worse before they get better. In this video, let's take a look at the most significant things that the report has said and what this means for the next 100 years for us as humans. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The summary of what the latest report said is basically that humans have been definitely causing climate change, we know, and that the link between human-caused reasons and extreme weather events have increased. It most importantly stated that cutting back on carbon emissions cannot actually stop us from crossing the threshold of the one and a half degree Celsius global rise in temperature, which is expected now to occur as early as the year 2040. But the report also said that globally, if countries work together to take immediate action and cut down emissions to net zero, the global temperature can then be lowered by a subsequent 0.1 degree Celsius before the end of the century. And that is in fact the good news, that there is still hope in the longer term, even if it's going to be quite a terrible short term. Now, why is this one and a half degree rise such a big deal? The first context we need to have is what the Paris Agreement said. The Paris Agreement is an international treaty on climate change and was adopted and negotiated and agreed upon by 196 parties to the treaty near Paris. The scientific input to the Paris Agreement was provided by IPCC's earlier report, the previous one called AR5, which came out in 2013. The agreement's long-term goal is to keep the rise in global mean temperature to below 2 degrees Celsius as compared to pre-industrial levels. Now, why do we keep talking about pre-industrial levels? Because that was before industries started, industries with emissions, and it was also when we started to have actual comprehensive long-term climate record keeping. It is also the time when we first started noticing trends of climate change. In fact, one of the very first persons to predict climate change and global warming was an American scientist named Eunice Foote. In 1856, she published a paper which was the very first academic paper to describe how carbon dioxide can absorb heat and how this can drive temperatures up globally in the future. The paper will be linked below. While we know that humans have now been changing the climate for hundreds, perhaps thousands of years with agricultural practices and land use change, we still compare temperatures everywhere to pre-industrial levels because that's what our baseline is. The time period that we typically think of is anywhere from the 1700s to the 1900s, depending on who you ask. Why did we agree on a two degree limit? Because first of all, it is inevitable that the temperatures rise. We've been pumping so much greenhouse gas into the atmosphere and the effects will roll on for a while. But with each small rise in global temperature, which is a big, big, big deal, there are many natural processes that compound in their effect. These processes are basically driven by transfer of heat and heat transfer can occur in one of two ways from two sources. Internal forcing is the process by which heat is transferred within parts of Earth's own climate system. 
This is things like El Nino, which transfers heat from the atmosphere to the ocean, raising the sea surface temperature. External forcing comes from outside of the Earth's climate system and changes temperature and climate on Earth. It can come from outside of the Earth, such as variations in heat from the sun, but it doesn't necessarily need to. One example of external forcing is volcanism, which is not a part of Earth's daily climate system, but a volcanic eruption could potentially send aerosols up, block sunlight, cause a temperature drop, bring in a mini ice age and do much more to the Earth's climate. According to the latest findings, past and present emissions have already contributed to a rise in temperature, unmistakably, and that humans have been directly responsible for it. The report also says that the 1.5 degree threshold will be breached by the year 2040. Largely, the report doesn't say things we don't know already. The report says things we already know, which when we list out can sound really alarming, but honestly is nothing new at this point. The Earth is warming everywhere. It is warming quite rapidly. Our planet hasn't been this warm for more than a hundred thousand years. And stopping it from getting any worse is going to require immediate and drastic action globally. The report mentions several things like increased hurricanes, increased frequency of compound extreme events like concurrent heat waves and droughts, fire weather and extreme wildfires on all continents except Antarctica, excessive rainfall and flooding, and much more. It states that as temperatures rise, the changes in regional mean temperature, precipitation and soil moisture will get larger and larger. Extreme weather events would increase, including heat waves and intense rainfall. Agricultural and economic droughts are also expected to follow globally. And the report states that rare events like an ice sheet collapse are now considered to be very likely to occur. The report examined five emission scenarios ranging from very high with no action taken to net zero globally and it said that the one and a half degree rise will be breached by 2050 and under any scenario other than complete net zero globally, the two degree threshold will be breached by the year 2060. Under the very high emission scenario with very little action, Temperatures are likely to rise by up to 5.7 degrees Celsius by the year 2100. The report goes on to say that land will continue to warm approximately one and a half times faster than the surface of water and that the Arctic will warm at twice the rate of global temperature rise. The latest findings have been made after methodologies used in climate science, modeling and risk assessment have evolved over the past few years. This includes updated and improved understanding of complex climate processes and the latest paleoclimate evidence of climate change responses in the past. There is hope in the form of net zero or carbon neutrality. We can't bring emissions down to a complete zero. They are a part of all industries today. So we do net zero, which is that all that is emitted is offset in some manner. If globally we strive for net zero emissions after things get really bad and we cross the one and a half degree mark in the 2040s, we can still bring the temperature rise down by 0.1 degree down to the 1.4 degree mark by the end of the century or the year 2100. At this point, that is the good news and that is the key takeaway from this report. We have known for a while that climate change is happening, terrible things are about to happen and are already happening. And all of these extreme events are being driven by anthropogenic climate change and human emissions. We know the process feeds back into itself and accelerates. And we've known for several years now that we are breaking all kinds of temperature records. But the biggest finding is that there is rapid warming and combating that requires urgent action and the small but very hopeful result that we would see from this urgent action will unfortunately be outside the lifetime of many of us.